Hotel is a place for people. People that need help, and that's all of us at one time or another. We need different kinds of help, maybe. Godtel is not primarily a place to give people a roof over their head and food to eat. Godtel is a place whereby we can tell people about Jesus Christ. Godtel is a school. It's my school. It's my wife's school. It's a place whereby we can learn how to minister to people, how to love people, sometimes people that are unlovable. And all the people that cooperate in this effort get to be part of what's going on at Godtel. We recorded that on our last album. I'm working on a new one now. But nobody cares. I'm going to put that on my new album. Nobody cares. <laughs> you look fuzzy with my glasses on, but you look better fuzzy. Here we are, it's Sunday. How did it get to be Sunday again? And these short weeks are killing me. See, you guys are here all week long. I'm here three days. Then I go to Livingston. I'm in Livingston for three days and one day in the middle in Lufkin. So my Monday is today and then Monday again on Wednesday and Monday again on Thursday. No wonder I'm singing Nobody Cares. <laughs> We are in Revelations chapter 9. <clears throat> some of you are wondering why you're here. And some of you are thinking about George Washington right now. <laughs> oh, me. The fifth and sixth trumpets. <clears throat> and the fifth trumpet sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. He opened the bottomless pit, and there rose out smoke out of the pit, and as smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke from the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. To them was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment them for five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns of gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. They had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue... He has the name Apollyon. One woe is past, behold, there comes two more woes. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and jathanus and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was a third part of men killed, 
by the fire, by the smoke, by the brimstone which is, issued out of their mouths. For the power was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails was like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. The rest of the men that were killed, that were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers or their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. You have to remember as we're reading through Revelations, especially this chapter, John was seeing a vision of the future, our time. And the only way he could write it down on, on paper was to express it in terms of his time. So you need to understand there's a lot of uh, symbolism in here. There's a lot of metaphors in here. Some of it really isn't that ex hard for us to understand today because we're looking kind of backwards. But John was looking forward to things he couldn't describe, so he described them in the only terms he knew, that of animals and other things like that. Well, the fifth angel sounds and a star falls from heaven. And to him, so we know this star is an angel in Revelation chapter 1. Remember it said the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches. So these stars that are falling around are angels. And it was given to him the key to the bottomless pit. Now we know that this is the Antichrist, the coming Antichrist, the devil, Lucifer. But we also know that he didn't have the keys to hell. Jesus does. It tells us that a little further on in Revelations. But he gave him the keys to the bottomless pit. Now what's interesting about that, if it's a bottomless pit, that means it has what? No bottom. The only thing I can think of is that either hell is so full of torment that you can spend your whole eternity just falling. That's going to be something. Or at the bottom of this pit, which has no bottom, is a doorway. And that doorway may lead to hell itself directly. We don't know. It doesn't tell us that. But you can speculate a little bit. Whatever it is, you don't want to find out. I mean, if you want to, we can put in your request. Just come to me after church and say you'd like to go to hell. Let me know and I'll pray for you to get there. I might even find a bus going and get you a ticket. But you wouldn't be doing that out of a very intelligent mindset. You don't want to go to hell, folks. The torment of hell is plural. That means there's many different kinds of torment. This falling could be one of them. Having no water and constantly being thirsty, we know that from Luke chapter 16, could be another one. The fire is never quenched. Being, can you imagine being on fire and being on fire for eternity? See, in hell, you can never cease to exist. You just keep dying, dying, dying. And all the suffering that goes with that dying, you experience. You don't want to go there. Unless you're just really stupid and foolish. And I've met people like that. Oh, Brother Gentry, I'm going to go to hell with all my friends. First thing they're going to find out when they get there is they don't have any friends. I mean, it's like every man for himself. He opened the bottomless pit and then out comes smoke out of the pit, like as of a great furnace, the sun and the air. Now, when he speaks of air here, he's speaking about our atmosphere was darkened, so we couldn't see the sun. It's smoke, it's soot. I mean, you ever seen a, well, I'm from California. I've seen lots of fires. You ever seen a big fire? Man, you can't see anything, even in broad daylight at noon. <clears throat> and there came out of the smoke locusts, upon the earth, and to them was given power as scorpions, lo locusts that have power like a scorpion, if you can imagine that. Of course, I don't believe he's talking about scorpions and locusts, as you'll see. He was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Now, in chapter 8, verse 7, he destroyed all the grass. So the only thing I can think of has happened here is that new grass was growing up and so God said don't destroy that. Let it grow. 
There's coming another time where he's going to destroy more grass or any green thing or trees, but destroy those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Those that do not have the blood of Christ covering their sins. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. Exodus 12, <clears throat> did I say 13? I did say that, didn't I? But I didn't mean that. I meant Exodus 12, 23. <laughs> Get it straightened out here. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. When he sees the blood upon the lintels on the two doorposts or side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses and smite you. And you shall observe these things. If you remember the story, God sent the death angel and uh, he told the children of Israel and told everybody, take the blood of the lamb and put it on the top doorpost and the two side posts. And when the death angel sees that, he'll pass over. Well, the Egyptians wouldn't do it. And I don't know if all the Jews did it, but if they didn't, they were in trouble. Because in one night, one night, God killed every firstborn in the land of Egypt. Every household had a firstborn. If I'd have been there and an Egyptian, I am the firstborn in my household of ten brothers and sisters. One now has passed away. Some of them look like they're going to. I don't know. I'm the oldest and the best looking. But that would have been me on that block. Firstborn, all dead. How many hundreds of thousands of people, we don't know. But God killed them. And you know, I get amazed at people that call themselves Christians. They think God's like Santa Claus. He only does good stuff. You got to understand God. God does what God wants to do. And we have no right to complain because we're the creation. He can do anything he wants to. If God wants to take a little baby, he can take a little baby, and he does it quite often. Man, you remember Bethlehem? When Jesus was born and when he was almost two years old, how Herod sent and killed all the babies in that whole area? Well, that was done by God. Why? So that Jesus would have no competition for them to know whom he was when he grew up. Because he was the only one left. That's why the angel came and told Joseph, you need to skedaddle. I think that was the word he used. And take your wife and your baby and go down to Egypt until I call you back. And then kill all those children. Of course, you have to understand it from God's point of view. Nobody ever dies. Jesus said that. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To him, everybody's still alive. We're just not here. And see, that's where the problem is. We place all our importance on here, and we shouldn't. I've been praying for 40 years to get out of this life. And God won't take me. I don't know why. Hadn't been from lack of trying. Before I became a Christian, I tried to kill myself twice. I was a failure at that. I even tried to get another guy to kill me, and he chickened out. He's a big, dirty, rotten chicken. Well, God had a plan. Then I got saved, and then I started to see God had a plan, you know. He really did. But I had a, after Rita, the Hurricane Rita, I was helping clean up some stuff, and a tree, we call them widow makers, a piece of tree about 20 feet long, about yay big around, about a thousand pounds of tree, had been lifted up by the storm and placed in these branches up there, and we didn't see it. And as we were working, the tree fell out, hit me smack on the head. Just drove my legs out from under me, put me flat on the ground. I didn't think much about it. I kind of shook it off. And the guy that was with me working, he said, well, Brother Junior, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Go back to work. Go back to work. It was hot. I was sweating. I was bleeding. I didn't know that. Down my back, I thought I was sweating. And so we get done about 3 o'clock. I go in the house. I take off my baseball cap. My wife almost fainted. She said, you look just like a conehead. 
Y'all ever seen the movie Coneheads? Yes. I had the biggest lump. Then I started feeling up there. Sure enough, man, I had this big old just wonder I'm alive. From that, I flipped a International Model M. Those are big tractors. Flipped it over on its top. I was 60-something years old when that happened. And the guys were on the other tractor. They come racing over when they saw what had happened. And they said, Brother June, how'd you do that? I said, what? They said, how'd you do that? I said, what are you talking about? They said, you dove off that tractor like you were 18 years old. I said, well, I don't know about that. I just knew I needed to get out of the way. <laughs> and I, I rolled, and as I rolled, I could see the tractor rolling behind me, so I just kept rolling. And I was singing, roll them, roll them, roll them, get them doggies. <laughs> Rawhide. Some of you are not old enough to remember that movie. And uh, then in 2018, I I fell off my car lift. I was nine feet in the air, and I fell off of it and dislocated this collarbone, which is still dislocated because they, I had two heart attacks right after that, and they couldn't operate on me because of the blood thinners. So I've learned to live with it and worked and worked and worked till I got all my motion back. And it doesn't bother me much. It just grinds a little bit. And I move it certain ways. I can hear it grinding. I went to the doctor the other day. And he says, you got your motion back? I said, yeah. He says, good. Leave it that way. I says, okay. So like I said, it's not from lack of trying. I wrecked a motorcycle at 70 miles an hour one time. Dislocated my hip. That was all. Popped it back in, got back on the motorcycle, and rode home. Some people said, Brother June, you're crazy. That could be. I don't ride motorcycles anymore, though. My wife keeps reminding me, you made a promise to God. I said, you're right. <clears throat> he says, don't kill anybody except those that don't have the seal of God or the blood of Christ covering their sin. So, it was given to them that they should not kill them, but torment them for five months. You don't believe God's in control. You need to read the Bible carefully. See, oh, the devil does bad stuff. God does all the good stuff. You know, we ought to talk to Brother Job about that. The devil comes to see God and and God says, where you been? He says, here and there, yonder. Have you considered my servant Job? What? Who brought Job up? God did. Well, yeah, you bless him. But take away everything he's got. Make him sick. Just don't kill him. Leave that one nagging wife with him too. He did. You read the story carefully. And Job never once gave the devil any credit for what happened to him. His ten children all died in one day. A house fell on him. All his servants were beaten up and killed. His cattle, he had lots of cattle. He was the richest man in the east. Everything was gone. In one day, his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? He says, woman, you speak like a fool. Shall we receive good things from the hand of the Lord and not evil also? The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And of course, you know the end of the story. Job passed his tests. God gave him twice back everything he had. And poor old Martha, that was his wife's name. It doesn't say that in the Bible. I named her. She had to have 10 more children. And I know what she said every time she went to the delivery room. I should have kept my big mouth shut. But who did all that stuff? God did. God killed 185,000 Amalekites in one night. God did it. Who gave Paul his illness? God did. That's why Paul finally said, I would rather glory in my infirmity that God's word would be heard. I mean, a lot of these people that talk about healing stuff, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. I was talking to some people this morning and they said, Brother Gene, how come you don't wear a mask? Or was that yesterday? I forget now. Time goes by too fast. I said, because I don't care. I said, you don't care if you get COVID? I said, no. I don't fear COVID. I fear God. If he wants me to have it, I'll have it. If he wants me to drop dead, I'll drop dead. 
The only thing I've asked my wife to do is make sure I'm dead. And then give away my stuff. I don't care. I'll be singing, I don't care. <laughs> a fellow asked me not too long ago, he says, Brother June, what, if you die, what's going to happen to God tell? I said, I don't care. I'll be in heaven. You think I'm going to be worried about you people after I'm gone? I might worry about you now, but when I'm gone, I ain't thinking about you anymore. I'll have bigger fish to fry and more important things to do, like say, howdy Jesus. That'd be a whole lot more important. I know you all think you're important, but... And men shall seek death and shall not find it. Isn't that amazing? Ever imagine being in such torment that you want to die? When I had that heart attack in November of 2018, I just wanted to die. I wanted the pain to quit. And I was on my way. Felt like Dwight was standing on my chest with a sledgehammer beating me up. Until they gave me morphine. I looked up from that bed and I said to the doctor in the ER, I said, Doc, I feel great. Can I go home now? He said, no, you're having a heart attack. I said, well, just give me some more of that stuff. I'll take it with me. <laughs> they wouldn't do it. Now, I could see how a person could get hooked on drugs real quick. I mean, I felt really, really good. And that's why I made up my mind. I wasn't taking any more of that stuff. So I went into surgery. They put me out. But after I came to, I said, I don't want anything. And it was hurtful. I, I was hurting. But I live with that. So it's okay. They shall not find death. Now he gets into the description of these locusts. Now listen carefully. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Remember, he's trying to explain what he saw in terms that he could put it into. On their heads were the crowns like gold. I don't know if you've ever seen these helmets that some of the helicopter pilots wear with the gold shield. Ah, I wonder if that's what he saw. Let's look at Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. I considered the horns and behold, there came among them another little horn. These are kings, one king after another, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. <clears throat> and they had hair like a woman, and her teeth were like the teeth of a lion. Joel 1 6. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number. Listen carefully. Whose teeth are like the teeth of a lion, and he has the cheek teeth of a great lion. These are people he's talking about. But he's describing what he's seeing, and he's not seeing what he can describe in words that he has. It gets better. And they had breastplates, breastplates of iron, really reminiscent of flak jackets or bulletproof vests. He called them breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Have you ever heard a helicopter up close? Well, you don't have to get too close. I saw a movie today and one guy got too close. Cut him all to pieces. Joel chapter 2 verse 5. Like the noise of chariots on top of the mountain shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. You ever seen soldiers when they come back from a battle? Everybody's black. Have you ever seen movies and stuff? Because from the dirt and the smoke and the soot and everything. We, we all be one people then. And they had tails like scorpions. 
and stings in their tails. You ever seen movies with attack helicopters in it? They shoot from the front and from the back. They also shoot from the sides. They're battleships. I mean, they're, they're heavily armed. And they had power to hurt men for five months. Could be that he saw helicopters, but he couldn't describe them. Didn't know how to. And they had a king over them. He's the angel of the bottomless pit. And we know that's Lucifer. His name, he has a lot of names, just like Jesus has a lot of names. Abaddon in Hebrew, Apollyon in Greek. One woe is past. Behold, folks, two more woes are coming. In other words, one's past and it's going to get worse. The sixth angel sounded and I heard the voice of the four horns of the altar, which is before God. And he said to the one that had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the river Euphrates. Why? Well, the answer is really very simple. Between China and the other parts of Middle Asia is a barrier. And the barrier is the Euphrates River. Listen. The four angels were loosed and prepared for a day and an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men. Basically what they did was dried up the river. Watch. Here's why. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. That's 200 million men. For years, ever since the Bible was written, scholars said that's an impossibility. That'll never happen. Back when John wrote this, there was only about 200 or 300 million people on the earth. And all of the known earth mostly was Asia and, of course, Europe, into Europe and Africa. There wasn't almost 8 billion people like we have now. But here's the thing. China right now has an army of 200 million men, just like it says right here in the Bible. But they can't get, I mean, how do you transport 200 million men? They ain't got enough transports for that. But once that river Euphrates is dried up, they can march. And I saw horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire Jathanus, brimstone, and the heads of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone, which reminds me of tanks. Tanks not only have a big cannon, they also have flamethrowers on them. And all that he's describing here comes out of a tank. I had the privilege, it was awesome. When our oldest son graduated from boot camp as a tank driver, we went up there to see the graduation and they did demonstrations for us. And one of them I'll never forget. They had an Abram M1 tank sitting down at the far end of the field on blacktop. We're all sitting in bleachers. They're showing these little demonstrations. All of a sudden the guy says something on his mic to that tank, and that tank takes off. This is a 60 ton tank, and it was burning rubber. I never seen anything like that. That tank moved so fast, and it got all the way in front of us and screeched to a halt and turned the tor turret toward us. And we're looking down the barrel of this tank. It was awesome. And they described what all that tank was capable of doing, and it reminds me of this description right here. I have a friend who, he likes a lot of guns. He's got a lot of guns. And he says, they ain't getting my guns until they cold, pry my cold dead finger off the trigger. I said, you know, that sounds pretty macho, but when there's a tank sitting in your front yard with a 60 millimeter cannon pointed at your living room, I'll bet you're going to give up your guns. I said, why you need so many anyway? You can only shoot one at a time. But you know, people are crazy. They're just buying up everything. Some guns right now, like uh, AR-15s, and that, it's almost impossible to buy them unless you get them used. Uh, most stores don't carry them anymore because they're all sold out. And some ammunition is really hard to find, you know. People are just buying up the stuff and stockpiling it like they got 18 hands to shoot with. And by these were a third part of the men of the earth killed. 
There's going to be horrible, horrible wars, much worse than we have now. The Bible tells us that after the war, the apocalypse, if you want to call it that, Battle of Armageddon, it's going to take seven years to bury the dead. Seven years. People are going to go around looking for pieces of bones and stuff like that, put little flags there so the barrier guys can come pick them up. Seven years. It's going to take seven years to get rid of all the weapons. Of course, at the end of that seven years, there's going to be one great battle. Only Jesus is going to win it with a word. Now, that's the kind of battle I want to be in, where I just stand there and Jesus does it all. And he will. <clears throat> These tanks can shoot coming and going back and forth. It says their mouth, they have power in their mouth. When you, One of the things that I heard somebody say one time is when they were cleaning a tank barrel, they had to swab the mouth. That's interesting. I thought, that's, that's interesting. They call that a mouth? Yeah. Huh. The rest of the men that were not killed by these plagues yet would not repent. Here's America. God says if a nation turns its back on me, I will destroy it. Here's America. We've turned our back on God. God's going to destroy us. And I can't get people to understand. You need to repent. You need to turn from your sins. You've got to be willing to follow God and do what he says. Obey him. Uh, Dwight and I were talking earlier. And I was telling him about Acts chapter 5, verse 32. God gives the Holy Spirit to them that obey Him. But most people don't want to obey Him. They don't want to com quit committing adultery. They don't want to quit drinking and smoking and carrying on and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Just, and, then, and then when the end comes, they're going to say, but I didn't get it. I didn't understand. If some preacher had come and told me. Well, it's on YouTube. You can hear it again if you need to. Or it will be on YouTube. <laughs> Most people don't care, folks. That's why I'm writing that little song. I haven't polished it yet. But most people do not care. We're worried about the virus. And the Christians are out there worried about this virus. But I don't see too many Christians asking anybody if they're saved. Folks, spending eternity in hell is a whole lot worse than this virus. But nobody seems to care. It's amazing to me. They wouldn't repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which neither see nor walk. And they're raising their children to do the same thing. Let our children watch things they shouldn't watch on TV. Oh, it's just harmless stuff. Witches, goblins, all kind of garbage. You know? Because we don't really care. We just want our kids entertained. Neither did they repent of their murders. Now what he's talking about here in the Old Testament, let's go to Psalms 106.37. They sacrificed their sons and daughters unto devils. We're doing it in America. We let them do anything they want to do. And they shed innocent blood. When Israel got in the promised land and started disobeying God, they started burning their children at the stake to Moloch, the demon God. Can you imagine that? Setting your own children on fire? Well, that's what they did. <clears throat> Leviticus 17.7 7. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they've gone a-whoring. What God is talking about there, He says, I'm going to put a stop to it. He's going to put a stop to it. If it takes destroying the whole place and killing everybody, He's going to put a stop to it. 
And they would not repent of their sorceries. The word sorcery there is where we, same word, root word, that we get our word pharmaceuticals. It's talking about drug addiction. They wouldn't give it up. I've met a lot of drug addicts in my life. We had a guy in a band that I was with years ago who was probably one of the best trumpet players I've ever heard. He played with Stan Kent's band and a lot of the big boys, but he got fired from just about every job he had because he stunk. We put him way on the other side of the stage. You know why he stunk? He was a heroin addict. He didn't care about bathing. He didn't care about anything except his drugs. But man, could he play that trumpet. He could scream on that trumpet all night long. It's just a talent he had. I don't know what happened to him. He probably killed himself by now with them drugs. He would not give them up. I had a lot of friends who would not give up their alcohol. It was killing them. And I see it a lot. I had a guy working for me one time that was really a nice guy. But he'd spent his whole life drinking and at age 54 he died of cirrhosis of the liver. And I preached his funeral. I had another guy that was a really good worker. I really enjoyed his company. We were good friends. He quit smoking and drinking and everything, but too late, 52 years old, he died of tongue cancer. You used to know what preachers have to put up with. Right up here north of town, there was a young man and a woman. I performed a wedding. He was 19, she was 17. A year later, she got on his case about some little thing, didn't matter much about anything. He went out in the garage and took out a gun and blew his brains out. Another kid was 16 or 17 years old, got arrested here back 45 years ago. It was nothing. It was a misdemeanor. They put him in a cell just till his parents come to pick him up. He hung himself. Of course, I get those kind of funerals because nobody else wants them. And it's sad. We had a guy who used to be Varsity Apartments up there where Java Jacks is or whatever that is, used to be. And uh, he went out drinking. His name was Doug. Went home. Got in his bed. I used to think if you're drinking, you get home and get in your bed, you're safe, right? Choked on his own vomit and died that night. I have no doubt God took him out. He was oh, that'll never happen to me. I had an aunt and she lived to be 198, smoked 97,000 cigarettes a day, drank two gallons of whiskey, and yeah. You know, there's always an exception to the rule. For whatever reason, I don't know. But some of you ain't going to make it that far. You're going to mess around and mess around and God's going to say, that's enough. And all God has to do is just quit giving you life. That's all he has to do. He wants us as a nation to repent, but I know in my heart it's not going to happen. But that still doesn't mean you can't individually get right with God. You don't have to go down with the ship. Unless you just want to. Most of you, I can look at your face and see you don't want to, but there's a couple with masks on. I don't know what you're thinking. I told the guy in the restaurant today, I said, you here to rob us? <laughs> I said, you look like a bank robber. He did, a big old burly guy with a mask on. Folks, we laugh, we joke, we have fun. There's nothing wrong with that. But somewhere down the line, you've got to take God's word seriously. If you don't, you'll pay. Father, we thank you for loving us. I thank you for each one in the room. And we're so grateful that there's salvation, that Christ paid the penalty for our sin and rose from the dead to give us life. There's no reason for anybody in this room to die and go to hell. If they do, it'll be their own fault and it'll be very foolish. There's no reason 
that anybody in this room cannot have a quality life. But there's too, it's too hard. I, I want to have my fun. I want to have my things. And we don't understand that some of the things we want are killing us. For the life of me, I don't understand why anybody would want to put any kind of substance into their body that's harmful. And yet as soon as we're done with the service, several are going to head to the smoking deck and do that. I used to smoke. But I can't understand for the life of me why I ever did. I used to drink. I can't for the life of me understand why I ever did that. All the things that I used to do after I became a Christian, they started fading and I didn't understand why I did those stupid things. I'm so grateful that you've forgiven me so I can move forward. We ask you to bless the remainder of this evening, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.